So hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Vincent Pellegrims and I'm working uh, for the Pacify project at the Institute of Astrophysics in Crete, Greece. Today I will talk to you um, about the work that I've done with uh, those important people here and that is entitled uh, Evidence for Line of Sight Frequency Decorrelation of Polarized Estimation in Planck Data. So this work sits in the context of characterization and study of the um, polarized diffuse emission from the galaxy and that uh, contribute, that are a significant foreground to the cosmic microwave background polarization. And so that is uh, an annoyance for uh, cosmology. As we all know, uh, some properties and, and matters change from place to place in the galaxy. And so um, <clears throat> there is, it is certain in a way that uh, SCDs of dust grains in the galaxy may change from place to place, which would imply that relative contribution of the ISM uh, cloud to polarized emission may vary with, um, with the frequencies. And as a result, <clears throat> if a dust SCD vary, um, the polarization patterns that can be seen at one frequency, let's say at the frequency where it dominates the signal, cannot be extrapolated as easily as we want uh, to lower frequencies where uh, CMB <clears throat> polarization study uh, would be performed. So uh, this um, fre frequency extrapolation of this templates um, are complicated by SED variation. And we know since the end of the last century that SED variation vary across the sky, and this can be uh, well um, illustrated by those full sky map from the Planck satellite, where we see the temperature and the um, spectral index of the dust emission. Uh, yeah, and since we are not sitting in a particular place in our galaxy, it's quite evident that since there is SED variation across the sky, there will be uh, SED variation along the line of sight. So line of sight frequency decorrelation from this cloud has been studied and demonstrated in this paper in 2015, but yet there were no observational evidence of this effect, suggesting eventually that the, this effect is weak. Um, in, in short, the phenomenology of the line of sight frequency decorrelation goes as follows. If we have more than one cloud along the line of sight and that those clouds are permeated by magnetic fields with different orientation and that the clouds have different SEDs, then we have what we call the line of sight frequency decorrelation, which is the fact that there is a relative contribution of the cloud to polarize int intensity, the change with the frequencies, which induce that the EVP of the dust emission uh, change with frequencies. To look for the effect, what we did is to uh, first use results from starlight polarization studies, uh, the work that um, Brandon uh, showed earlier, where we have, uh, thanks to G9 collaborators, we know uh, in this particular region of the sky, the, the orange one here, that we have two clouds with magnetic fields having uh, um, a different orient orientation by 60 degrees in both clouds. And the nearby line of sight in blue here, we know that we have only one, uh, one cloud that contributes to the signal. What we did then is to look to those, uh, at those regions of, of the sky in the uh, Planck polarization maps at 353 and 217 gigahertz and compute the EVPA differences. And what we obtained is that the EVPA difference is, is uh, is not compatible with zero for the two cloud region, while it is compatible with zero uh, for the one cloud region. And this fact is uh, apparently robust against different estimates of the, uh, uh, of the CMB. So we, thought we, we, we take this as a very first in uh, of, the, of the line of sight frequency um, decorrelation. Of course, we would like to perform such a kind of analysis for a large area on the sky, but so far there is no large scale, uh, large survey of starlight polarization. But what we can do is to rely on H1 data to infer the ISM complexity. Indeed, it, uh, it is known that the gas and the dust in our galaxy are very well correlated. So correlated that indeed, we can use H1 data to predict uh, the, dust, the dust emission and even the dust polarization emission, if we consider the H1 fibers, those fibers that are um, elongated structures in the uh, H1, H1 data. So our plan was to use H1 data to infer the ISM complexity, build two samples, one target sample and one control sample. The first where uh, the chance to observe the effect of line of sight frequency correlation is uh, maximized and the other one where it shouldn't be observed. 
For that, we use the line of sight decomposition of cloud, uh, the cloud decomposition uh, of pen and pulue and lens to identify those lines of sight where there is at least two significant clouds that contribute to the, uh, to the emission and to um, find out the pixels where there is only one cloud. Then we use the Clark and Hensley catalog to identify those lines of sight where the magnetic field orientation is significantly different in the dominant clouds. And we ended up with the sky, um, <clears throat> the sky distribution of, of pixels as shown here, where we have the northern hemisphere here. So fine, now we have the sample of pixels and we move to the dust polarization maps at 353 and 217 gigahertz, so from blank again. And we compute the EVPA differences in both sample target and control. So what to expect? Well, in a sample, lines of side frequency decoration would produce a scatter in the EVPA differences, a scatter that wouldn't be observed if the signal isn't there. And what we got is the following. We got those histograms of EVPA differences for the target sample in orange and for the uh, control sample in blue. And as you can see, the scatter in the histogram, the orange histogram is larger. Now, if we consider this, the circular standard deviation uh, of these histograms as uh, as, an, uh, as an indicator of the, of the scatter and call it D, this is what we got. We got that the scatter of EVPA difference is significantly larger for the target sample than in control. So we have to reject with very high significance the null hypothesis saying that uh, the scatter are both consistent. Right, but uh, the frequency decorrelation from uh, dust cloud is not the only source of scatter in EVPA differences. There is also the decorrelation from CMB and dust, but we should have accounted for, for it uh, since we are removing CMB estimates uh, from the frequency map. There is the other point is that uh, <clears throat> the noise in the polarization data might be different in target and control. And it, indeed it is different since the target sample is uh, more depolarized than uh, control sample. So the whole point was to find out whether the amplitude of the SCD variation is high enough so that it produces an excess in the scatter, in an excess uh, with respect to what the noise produces. And to address this, this uh, question, we produce mock sample from the control sample so that all mock sample um, uh, have noise properties that match the noise property found, found, found in the target sample. Three so, more minutes. Yes, and we did so and obtained this uh, kind of uh, plot where we can see that the null hypothesis that says that the excess of scatter and target is consistent with noise or data needs to be uh, rejected. And this rejection actually is uh, robust against different CMB estimate, different um, uh, as can be seen here. So we have the different CMB estimate from a deep learning collaboration, but also from different handling of the residual systematics. So the third blank release and a uh, new map making uh, <clears throat> maps of, of uh, a full sky map, but also that our results are robust against uh, the specifics in our analysis, such as the uh, specific in pixel selection, also the choice in spread estimator. So we were pretty confident uh, to say that uh, this is the first observational evidence for the line of sight frequency decoration of polarized dust emission. And what makes us even more confident is that uh, we have found all phenomenological expectation of the effects. For example, if the we expect, <clears throat> for example, if the magnetic field, the angle between the magnetic field or orientation increase, we expect a decrease of the um, degree, degree of polarization, which we do observe, and a systematic increase of the amplitude of the, the um, uh, of the signal, so an increase of D, which we do observe, as it can be seen on this plot. So, as a conclusion, we have proven that line of sight frequency decoration of polarized estimation is measurable toward complex line of sight in the noise bank data. And as a corollary, we have proven that ancillary data, they can be used to point out the problematic region in the sky and, and they can be uh, used also to model SED variation. Thank you. <laughs>